One of the best and most fascinating events in the mid-war deck is salt negotiations. Depending on the situation, it can be very useful and powerful, and is even recognized as such by newer players who easily realize that being able to draw back a good event is a potentially game-changing ability. We're going to look at it here in more detail on Legendary Tactics. Salt negotiations is a great event to have in hand for either player. It can potentially shape the course of the mid-war. There are timing and some other considerations to factor in, but overall this is a card that you want to make sure you understand clearly so you can take advantage of its effects. And so we will look at it more closely here. Let's take a look at the event first. Salt Negotiations is a neutral 3-op mid-war start event. Triggering it will improve DEFCON by two levels, and any further coup attempts throughout the remainder of the turn suffer a negative one die roll modifier for both players. The more interesting part of the event is that the player who triggered it can sort through the discard pile and reclaim one non-scoring card after revealing it to their opponent. This card has some great benefits overall. The first and most important part in my opinion is the ability to retrieve an event from the discard pile. So obviously, you don't want to play this on turn 7, right after the reshuffle where all the discards get put back into the deck, leaving you with few, if any, cards to choose from. Turn 6 is ideal because you will have the most choice. The most popular cards to draw back into your hand will be standard choices like Brush War, Red Scare Purge, and ABM Treaty. For the Soviets, you can add Destalinization, Decolonization, Fidel, OPEC, among others. And the US will take advantage by redrawing such great events as Grain Sales to Soviets, Colonial Rear Guards, Usuri River Skirmish, or the Voice of America, or any other great and useful event that was sent to space by your opponent. In fact, most times it's the starred events that are the most powerful, and they're the ones that you're going to want to return to hand. Sometimes the choice is a little bit overwhelming, and this card can be tough for those of us who suffer with analysis paralysis. Red Scare Purge is another great one to return to your hand, especially if you played it on the current turn in conjunction with Quagmire or Bear Trap, with the view of headlining it the following turn. This might prolong Quagmire and Bear Trap for your opponent, or it might just hurt your opponent's ability to recover from its aftermath. In either case, you may simply cause your opponent to resign and you can walk away with a nice, easy win. The fact that this card improves DEFCON by two levels can be a help or a hindrance to playing it. Obviously, it can help you to escape from a DEFCON suicide situation. Although, a savvy opponent who knows what you're up to can reverse that situation by lowering DEFCON two levels using cards like We Will Bury You or Duck and Cover by triggering the opponent's event in conjunction with a battleground coup. And also keep in mind that the DEFCON improvement changes things for both players. It can be a hindrance if you're relying on things staying at DEFCON 2 to protect your holdings in a close game. So there are times when Salt becomes unplayable because of how it opens things up again and gives your opponent first dibs on a battleground coup. But improving the DEFCON level can open up some great options for a card like ABM Treaty. For example, the US can play Salt Negotiations in their last action round, typically boosting the DEFCON from 2 to 4. At the end of the turn, DEFCON rises to 5. Then, after the Soviets take their typical uh, first action round battleground coup, the ABM Treaty card can be used to coup or realign in Europe, which is normally a rare circumstance. Or, the event can just be used to give you an extra coup opportunity in a given turn at a given DEFCON level. The negative one modifier will offset the effectiveness of any coups you or your opponent make, which is also a double-edged sword. It's always challenging when you open up the board for a key battleground coup and then the die roll modifier nullifies or mitigates your effort. For the Soviets, as an added event interaction, SALT can be a way to mitigate a US play of nuclear subs, both by giving all the American coups a negative one modifier and by lowering DEFCON to allow you to counter coup, albeit with the same modifier. A less obvious benefit of playing SALT negotiations is that it gives you room to hold an extra card to the following turn. 
This is potentially a nice opportunity to deal with blockade, for example, if it comes out in the mid-war, or just to help with general hand management. You may even want to hold this card over a turn or two until something useful shows up in the discard pile, if you can manage it. And in the same vein, if Salt Negotiations hasn't turned up yet, you may want to hold a potentially horrific enemy event in hand instead of sending it to space and leaving it vulnerable in the discard pile. You can play this card for ops, but if you do, you'd be best to do that after the turn 7 reshuffle. You don't want this card turning up in your opponent's hand a few turns later with a variety of great options in the discard pile. As the Soviet player, don't forget that the US potentially has another card available to draw cards up from the discard, the late war event, Star Wars. So for either player, Salt Negotiations is a great event, but with some mitigating factors. The card recursion benefit is great, but as I mentioned earlier, the negative coup modifier and the DEFCON improvement are effects that can cut both ways. Play this for the event, or hold it over until a better opportunity to play that event presents itself. This has been our analysis of the event card Salt Negotiations in Twilight Struggle. Thank you so much for watching. If you got value from this video, please click like and subscribe down below, and comment if you like. This is NATO with Legendary Tactics.